Hi, this is Bob, the old ham, been on the air for 56 years now. I worked at Heath Company in the service department. I was later promoted to engineering. And one of the uh, rigs that I didn't get to work on was the SW7800. So I had a chance to buy one the other day that didn't work. So I just got it going. And you can hear that's got a nice uh, CW note to it. Along with some static, there's some storms out there. But uh, what, I, what I ran into, that, that's unusual too. I, I, uh, I haven't been able to get that out. I don't think it's really going to hurt anything. But I think it's a characteristic of this particular rig or radio. And when you turn it off, it squawks like that. But notice how steady that display is there, and how nice that CW tone is. And it wasn't like that. And uh, what I did, I changed uh, this capacitor here, trying to get rid of the hum. I changed this capacitor here, I changed this capacitor here, I changed this capacitor here. And it still hummed. I put my scope on the uh, power supply output right here on the end of this large capacitor and there was uh, five tenths of a volt ripple there, a triangular waveform. And uh, this radio can also be powered by 12 volts DC and I've got a very good 12 volt DC supply up here. So I hooked it up and powered it by 12 volts DC and wow did it work good. But when I put it on AC and plugged it in and used the internal power supply, uh, the numbers on the readout, the, the uh, frequency readout on the front, were going up and down all by themselves. And I could hear a hum on signals, especially on CW signals. That is Morse code. That's called CW for continuous wave. So anyhow, uh, I didn't like that. I didn't want it like that. And I thought, well, I can run this thing. I can run it with, uh, with an external 12-volt power supply. And I thought, well, gee, I don't like that. I want to run it on the internal power supply. So I took a little uh, voltage regulator here. Now, the voltage produced in the power supply is actually 15 volts. And uh, I had a 7812, an LM7812 to TO220 regulator which has got plenty of capacity for that uh, little radio. And I thought, well, what, what would happen if I put that in line with the 12-volt uh, line? And uh, I did. And I've got it mounted over here. It's mounted right there. And there is a ground, ground connection on the back of this radio. And so I used that to mount the uh, regulator. Now that way I didn't have to drill a hole or anything. I uh, put little wires on the regulator and I covered them with heat shrink so they can't possibly shirt out with anything. And I have a capacitor in the circuit too. It's a 2200 microfarad uh, capacitor. It needs only to be a uh, 16 volt, but this is a 50 volt capacitor. And I used that because that's what was in my junk box. And I got my ground connections here right off of this, which is the uh, muting uh, connector. There's a ground lug right there that wasn't used as part of that connector. So that's where I grounded this uh, regulator here, right there. This is the circuit right here. I hope you can see that all right. That doesn't look too bad. I uh, probably will look better if I turn the light on here. Let me do that. And if I get farther back and then zoom in on it, it will probably be clearer. Anyhow, this is the uh, regulator here that I put in there. Here's the input line. This is the regulator itself. Here's the ground, the center pin. Comes in on the left. You got the hole at the top here. You're looking at the front of the regulator. Comes in on the left and then goes out on the right. And this is the 2200 microfarad capacitor. Now, a, a 1000 microfarad or a 1500 or a 3000, this isn't too critical. Maybe even a 500 would work in this position. It doesn't make that much difference, really. 
but these come right off of the two diodes, D624 and D625. And what I did, I used an X-Acto knife. You can use a number one, you can use any knife really, it's good and sharp. And I cut that circuit board foil uh, right there where the two diodes are. So the diodes are the only thing that come in here to this part of the regulator. The diodes connect right to there and then the other part this goes back out and I've got a twisted pair of wires in here the yellow and the white right there that goes under the chassis now all this can be taken off really easy you can take this loose here and uh, you can just unsolder these two connections right here and you can take this board out which I wanted to retain that ability to be able to take that board out so uh, that's what solved my hum problem really made this thing work nice and like I say, the digits on the dial were flickering around and going up and down, things like that. And then when I tuned in a station, uh, broadcast band, uh, shortwave band, uh, copying uh, Morse code, whatever. That's a very weak station there. Whatever. Then uh, I would get that hum all the time. And you can see the numbers are nice and steady stay right where they should be. Now let's put that right on 7 there and I'll change the frequency, the band, change the band here. See there's 6 megs, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Or you can go all the way up to the top which will read 29 the way I've got it set. Or you, it should go uh, 28 to 29 and I've got the dial all the way up so it's on 29. But you can see how nice that works. Other little change I made on this was I put an LED. They sell LED uh, light bulbs that, that fasten right into a bayonet socket now. And I got one of those and put it in instead of the uh, regular pilot light. It reduces some heat there. Reduces also the load on the power supply a little bit. I, uh, I was a little concerned about using this regulator in there because you need some headroom when you're uh, when you're using regulators I like to see a little more headroom when I say headroom uh, you got a 12 volt regulator and uh, I like to see those powered by 18 to 20 volts but we've got 15 volts available and it's working and what I'm after here is reducing the amount of hum in the receiver not in really getting good voltage regulation although that I'm sure it improves the regulation uh, but I was really uh, kind of surprised that the 7812 worked just fine to do that and uh, the ripple here which I was getting half a volt triangular wave ripple uh, when you go to the output of this regulator the ripple is down to less than 20 millivolts it's practically down to nothing there so all the way down from half a volt uh, on the input here down to 20 millivolts and boy does it make this thing work nice so I just thought I'd pass that on to you guys because I know there's a lot of guys out there that have these receivers and uh, probably are having a similar problem. They put a very simple power supply in it. They got those diodes feeding directly into that capacitor and basically that's all the filtering you have is that one capacitor. And I put a 20,000 microfarad capacitor on here and I still had quite a bit of ripple. So uh, this circuit here that I put in there really took it out and so I thought I'd pass that on for anybody that's got an SW7800. You can put a little 7812 regulator in there, add a separate single capacitor on the input. All these leads then I covered with heat shrink tubing so nothing can short out. And uh, oh, it works great. So that's it, everybody. 73s and good DX.